an actually affordable 1440p full gaming setup. That was the mission of today's video. Every single thing on this desk totals up to just around $1,000, and that of course includes all of the peripherals, the monitor, and even this custom gaming PC, which I've never shown on the channel before. And I'm not kidding about that 1440p performance. This PC plays Helldivers 2 at 67 FPS in 1440p Ultra, 72 FPS in Cyberpunk 1440p Ultra, and we're even taking advantage of this higher refresh rate monitor with 142 FPS in Modern Warfare 3. I know it seems like the price of all the components are just going higher and higher, but the amount of value that you can get for just a $1,000 setup is very impressive if you know what you're doing. So let me show you how after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by GVG Mall, and you probably already know that I've been using them for so long to activate Windows on a ton of my own builds. They're actually running a huge sale right now, which boosts my normal 18% discount up to 25% off if you use code ZTT18, and I'll have that linked at the top of the description. They not only have Windows keys, but also a ton of other stuff such as Office, and even game keys for platforms like Steam, Origin, and Uplay, and they even have console stuff too, like PSN prepaid cards as well. Activating Windows is super simple, and only takes like three minutes total, so activate Windows today and remove that nasty watermark, and don't forget to use ZTT18 for 25% off. Alright, so we'll try to calm our excitement just a bit and save this pure performance gaming PC for last, but almost equally exciting is this mouse selection. I actually saw a video from my friend Liam over on TikTok talk about how this is the best part of his setup and how it wasn't actually expensive compared to everything else that he owned, so he fully convinced me that I needed to check this out for myself. He had the wire version though, which isn't going to fly for someone like me, so I went with the wire. It's called the HyperX Pulse Fire Haste Wireless, and this usually costs around $60 on Amazon, but I actually scooped it up brand new on eBay for $38. Performance-wise, this very well could be the best value mouse I've ever used before, and this thing is a beast in terms of both comfort and accuracy. I also love how HyperX includes not just a second pair of glides, but also grip tape, which I didn't get around to testing out myself, but I definitely will after making this video. The tactile TTC Golden Micro Switches are super satisfying. The Pixar PAW3335 sensor is super snappy and felt really accurate, especially for this budget price, and the total weight comes in at less than 60 grams. You can also use the mouse perfectly fine without software if that's not your jam. The DPI presets are 400, 800, 1600, and 3200 by default, but with the software, you can completely customize these to whatever you want, and you have some impressive RGB control as well. You can even dial in your polling rate and liftoff rate along with some other settings. Honestly, this mouse feels amazing amazing, and even though I'm daily driving a $150 Corsair mouse at home every day, I definitely want to take this home with me and really put it through its paces. I've been really meaning to test out X Defiant, which launched a few days ago, so that seems like the perfect title for me to whip around on the mouse pad with and get dialed in for those headshots. I'll probably try that over on twitch.tv slash zaxtechturf. I've been building a PC and then gaming almost every stream, so make sure you follow over there and turn on notifications so you don't miss them. Moving on to the next peripheral, this one I already am dialed in with, and that's that's the Meiji 65% mechanical keyboard. The Amazon page actually calls it 60%, but I'm pretty sure it's 65. I could be wrong though. I am definitely not a keyboard expert. Not going to talk a whole lot about this one either because I already featured it in a video before, but in case you missed it, this is one of the most modding friendly budget mechanical keyboards on the market, and there's a million YouTube videos about it. Here's some of the comments from my own original video with it. For around $30, this keyboard is amazing. This is the best keyboard I have ever owned, all for like 26 to 30 bucks. In that video, I actually did a very cheap DIY mod where I installed some foam in the housing as well as painters tape the backside of the PCB. And for the 30 minutes and like five bucks that cost me, the sound is much better than how it arrived out of the box. This is a fully hot swappable board with an unlimited amount of customization options, and I think it's the best you can do for under $30 as far as I'm aware. I even snagged mine for $25 off an Amazon sale. Now, compared to this setup though, the keyboard does kind of feel like the weak point when I went through a proper gaming session trying to evaluate everything all at once. It's not because the keyboard feels bad, it's just compared to the other amazing products and with the power of the PC and 1440p right next to me, this keyboard did feel a little bit out of place and it's probably where I would spend extra 
extra money if I had it to spend. Next up, we have the headset, and this is the HyperX Cloud Stinger 2, and I finally got my hands on the all black actual PC version of this. Last time I featured these, it was just the blue colored PS5 version because the PC one has been out of stock, and man, I'm glad I was finally able to get these. Not only is the design just super clean, minimal, and doesn't give off the RGB gamer vibes, but they also perform great. They're super lightweight on my head with a perfect weight distribution, and I feel like I can wear it for hours on end. I actually did clock in a longer than normal Diablo 4 gaming session while at work so I could test out this setup, and the dark, demon, bass-heavy sounds that came from that game sounded amazing on here. The quality is fantastic for the price. And here's what the microphone sounds like. It's a little bit high-pitched and lacks the bass, but so does my actual voice. Ooh. Overall, for $40, I don't think it gets much better than this. I do wish the volume dial was on the left-hand side instead of the right, because I'd rather lift my hand off the keyboard to adjust it instead of my mouse, but that's just personal preference. What I really like, though, is again how lightweight and comfortable it is, but also these little adjustment numbers on the band, which allows you to min-max and completely dial in your comfort in case it gets accidentally readjusted. Now, every great gaming setup, including the budget ones, does need a proper mouse pad, but since this is always a subjective choice depending on which design you want, I stuck with the matte black ZTT option that you can buy on ZTTBuilds.com. We actually don't sell the mouse pad directly, at least not yet, but every build purchased other than our monthly drops comes with a free setup upgrade, which not only includes this, but also a fake plant and even a ZTT headset stand. That way your setup gets a little bit of an uplift along with your new PC. For this setup guide, I recommend just budgeting around 10 to 15 bucks and getting whatever design you think looks the best. Honestly, there's a bazillion options on Amazon alone. And finally, before wrapping things up with the PC, let's take a look at the monitor because just like everything else on the desk, this is pretty impressive for the price. This is the Kurui 27 inch 1440p 144 hertz 1800R curved VA monitor. And I'll have a link to this along with everything else we're talking about today down in the description. You guys hopefully know how I roll at this point. I don't get out the color calibration tests and evaluate a frame by frame analysis on the motion blur or anything like that. There's other YouTubers out there that are far better than me at reviewing monitors, but what I can tell you from my perspective is that it probably doesn't get better than this for $160. At least I can't imagine it because this is simply just a lot of monitor for the price. I mean, 1440p, 144 hertz alone is the best selling point, but the performance, colors, and enjoyability is very solid. It's VA, so we're getting the slightly faster refresh times, but not quite the perfect colors and viewing angles of IPS. It of course has to make some sacrifices to get the price down so low. Another sacrifice they made is with the stand because there's only a tiny amount of tilt adjustability, but there is a vase and mounting option here if you wanna use your own monitor arm to dial in the ergonomics, which you can buy for like 30 bucks. Overall, this does have over 2000 reviews with a 4.3 rating on Amazon, so other people are definitely enjoying it just like me. Again, we're not gonna get an absolute banger here with the budget that we have for today's video. We had to save the majority of our budget for the gaming PC. And speaking of which, let's finally talk about that. And other than the tiny little cooler, which you probably already noticed, this thing is an absolute tank of a build and even looks pretty nice. I actually didn't notice until the live stream of me building the PC that I ordered the ID Cooling A400 Frozen instead of the A410, which I usually buy. And yeah, this A400 is apparently the tiny alternative. And although it does keep our Ryzen 5 5600 at perfectly fine temperatures, it does look a little funky in there. Also inside the build is 16 gigabytes of YOLO all black DDR4 that's clocked at 3200 megahertz, a one terabyte silicone power A60 NVMe, and that GPU is of course the ASRock Challenger RX 7700 XT with 12 gigabytes of VRAM. Everything's inside the deep cool CH370, which is a pretty minimal all black design and doesn't have any features that are super impressive or anything, but the built-in headset stand is pretty clutch, especially when you're using it for a video about a full setup guide. The Ryzen 5 5600 and RX 7700 XT is some of the best value that you can get for a pure performance and budget 1440p system. And here's all of the benchmarks that we got, which are all super impressive. Like I said in the intro, we're talking about Modern Warfare 3 almost completely utilizing the 144 hertz panel in 1440p ultra. We definitely could have gone above that if we dialed in the settings to about high. Cyberpunk 2077 also looked amazing with a silky smooth 72 FPS using the built-in benchmarking tool with 1440p ultra. And I didn't properly test and benchmark Diablo 4, but I was getting a few hundred FPS during my setup testing run, and this has been my go-to non-sim racing game ever since season four launch. Believe it or not, the game actually doesn't suck anymore, and the community is pretty happy with it. It's been a lot of fun, especially when testing in this setup. Here's what the final parts list for just the PC look like, and the total came out to be $778, but that's mainly because I bought the CPU from AliExpress for 82 bucks. Overall, this entire setup ran me just over that $1,000 target mark, and honestly, like I said in the 
the intro again, it's so amazing to me how much value we can get these days for this price range. This isn't just a 1440p with low or medium settings kind of janky setup. We're easily crushing 1440p ultra with a 144 hertz panel and actually good peripherals. If I had about a hundred more dollars to spend, I'd probably buy a better keyboard and then a better monitor just so you know, but you absolutely can't go wrong with any of these products and I'm very happy with how this turned out. I'm actually gonna be selling not just the PC, but the entire setup over on zttbuilds.com slash drops for our monthly June 1st drop. I'm gonna price this thing at just $900, so you better believe this one is gonna go quick. As a reminder, our Discord exclusives get access to the website drop 30 minutes before everybody else. So if you want a chance at doing that and just to join our exclusive section of the Discord server where I hang out every single day, the link to join the server is down in the description. And if you wanna spend a little bit more money on the PC instead of upgrading your peripherals, then feel free to watch the video that's on the screen now and combine that build with the rest of this setup guide.